welcome back to Unapologetically Woman. We're celebrating phenomenal women all across Kentucky who make no apologies for their perspectives or the impacts that they're making in the community. Today, we're celebrating Coach Kyra Elsley. Kyra is a wife, a mom, an athlete, and University of Kentucky women's basketball head coach. Unapologetically woman, Coach Kyra Elsley, that's you. That's me. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, I'm so excited. We're going to jump right on in. Let's get it. You're a Kentucky girl. I'm a Kentucky girl. Tell us through. about it. I'm a Kentucky girl through and through, born and raised in LaGrange, Kentucky. Um, I am a country girl. Everybody teases me about it, but there is no other place that I would rather grow up. And so to be from Kentucky and to be the head women's basketball coach at Kentucky, how amazing is that? It is so amazing. It's actually an honor. I do have to tell a secret, though. Uh-oh, I love secrets. Okay. I grew up, my family is divided, half U of L fans, half Kentucky fans. I grew up a U of L men's basketball fan my whole life. However, it's tragic. It is tragic. It's tragic. You know, I grew up that way. However, you know what? You converted. John, I converted. And you know who converted me? Tell me. John Wall. He asked me to come to Rupp Arena to watch him and Demarcus Cousins play. I went to Rupp Arena. I sat in the seats. It was the first time in my life that I cheered for Kentucky women's basketball. And from that point on, I'm a Kentucky uh, wildcat through and through. Oh, well, I'm so, gl I'm so glad that happened like that. Because I'm like, wait a minute, Kentucky, Louisville, we're not going to have any I know, of that. You know, it's still, a real, still really hard for my family. So when I became the head coach, now they will wear a Kentucky women's basketball shirt to the game. But they are still. It has to you, be specific. It's women. very specific. And then they wear U of L men's. They're like, no, we're going to cheer for her, but that uh, rest of that, yeah, we're not see, cheering for that. that. They say the LZ strong. We're going to stick with it uh, through and through. So here we go. So your mom and your family, they sound like they've been a huge support. Your eyes light up when you talk about um, your family. So we know that nobody just shows up. You didn't just show up and you were the head coach at the University of Kentucky for, for the women. Tell me about your journey. Well, the Elsie family, let's just talk about them. They're crazy. The Elsie clan, we're wild. There's uh -huh. a lot of us, um, but we're really close. Uh, we're a Christian family. We're a sports family. Um, and we Competitive? Do we are very competitive, <laughs> and we do everything together. When I took my official visit to the University of Tennessee, 20 Elsies went with me on my visit. Coach Pat Summit wanted the whole to, village. The whole village that it took to raise me went with me um, to send me off to pick a college. Um, Coach Pat Summit wanted to know who was left in Lagrange, Kentucky, because, because she they thought everybody came. was in Knoxville. Um, but that's that's how we roll. How was it playing for her? It was amazing. It was the hardest thing that I have ever done in my life. It was the most rewarding. And if you can survive Coach Summit and the skills that she teaches you on and off the court, uh, she will set you up for success after. Well, before Coach Summit, you were in high school. Wait a minute. I just jumped. We just jumped yeah, all yeah, around. That's okay. That's okay. You were in high school. Yes. I think you may have been an All-American. I Tell was us an All-American at Odom County High School. Um, I played with the same group of girls from sixth grade all the way through. So we are sisters for life. Um, Coach Dave Weedman. Um, Coach Mark Evans, they helped make me the player and the person that I am today. Still very close uh, to both of those. So thankful for the opportunity and the community of LaGrange, Kentucky. When my mom didn't have the money to send me to basketball camps or I was raising money for different things, the community jumped in. And so that's why the community and the village is so important. And that's why y'all you picked up the whole county and took them over on the college visit. Absolutely, because that's so it's wonderful. The village. It's the village. Um, it was amazing. I had the opportunity to do, to do a give back camp um, this year at in Oldham County and to see the teachers and the community and the players, the little kids come out, you know, because I want to give people hope that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to it. I was always a small town girl with big dreams. I knew I was going to leave one day, but my heart will always be there. Did you know you always wanted to be a head basketball coach? Did you know that? When did you find that out or come to that realization? You know, really, I didn't. I, when I finished playing, you know, I had a chance to go play professionally, and I just didn't love it enough anymore to train um, like you need to train. Um, and I had been playing competitive basketball since fifth grade. 
um, through college. I went through two knee surgeries. Uh, so Coach Summit and I had an end of the year meeting and she was just like, I think you would be a great basketball coach. And I was like, eh, I don't know. You all put a lot of time, effort, energy, and I mm -hmm. kind of knew how wild we were um, uh -huh. to be, you know, falling behind the other girls. So Virginia Tech had a job opening. And so she was like, I'll make you a deal. You go interview for the job. If you get it, give it your best for a year. I wanted to go to the wide world of sports and Disney because ah. I wanted to live in the sun, <laughs> still be around basketball. You know, I thought it would be a fun city. Um, but Coach is always right. I went mm -hmm. to Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. I got the job. And 21 years later, here I am. And it didn't, still did not happen just like that. It did not happen. It was a journey. You know, I've, I've had uh, amazing opportunities. I've worked at Western Kentucky, Virginia Tech. Uh, Kansas so it's taken me all over and had the opportunity to work with amazing people who helped get me to where I am today uh, and we can't leave out coach Matthew Mitchell he's my brother my mentor my mm -hmm. friend but he really prepared me for this moment this moment is made up of a lot of little moments, right? Yeah. And so we know that basketball is not just about basketball. And you probably have some very unique relationships with the players on your team. Absolutely. Talk about those. You know. You and the influence have... you may be having on them. Yes, I have influence on them mm -hmm. along with the staff, but you know what? They make me a better person every day. They challenge me. When I tell you, they hold my feet to the fire of mm -hmm. accountability. Okay. Uh, but that's what I love about them. You know, they're strong, they're ambitious, and we challenge each other to be better. Um, and this is what you do, why you coach, uh, to see the rewards and fruits of your labor when they go on and they get married and have kids mm -hmm. and get the dream job, to know that you played a little piece in it. That This is why you do it. Well, and all of those life lessons, too. A lot you of know, life lessons. That's, that's why I love sports, because the biggest lesson, I hate being a good sport. You know why? Because <laughs> you have to lose in order to be a good sport. Yes, well, sports, that's the thing. Sports crosses so many barriers. It forces you to connect with people, um, different cultures, different religions, different uh, socioeconomic backgrounds, but it one goal. Mm -hmm. And so it forces a lot of people to work together. And then being on a team, it's a sisterhood. Sometimes you have to fight it out. Sometimes you have to cry it out. Sometimes you have to pray it out. But at the end of the day, we're family and we figure it out. Wow, and, and listen, life lessons go a long way. They really, they really, really do. They do, and the discipline of sports. I mean, how you have to train, you wake up, uh, you sacrifice time away from your family, your friends, uh, you get knocked down sometimes, and, and you have to figure it out. So they are life lessons, and that's why a lot of people want to hire athletes. Uh, they have to compete, they have to perform under pressure, the discipline um, to get the job done. Now, you have a family, uh, little Jackson, and you have a husband, too. We'll talk about Jackson in a minute. Okay. But I have seen you all over the place in Atlanta, <laughs> Florida, <laughs> recruiting, walking through all of these AAU tournaments. Yes. How do you find the time for that? Well, you I have to make, make time <laughs> because it's the lifeline of our program. But, you know, I'm blessed with an amazing husband, uh, Dexter. Uh, played college football at Murray State. He's from Kentucky as well, so he mm -hmm. understands what it takes to get the job done, and he is my number one fan. If you hear him yelling in Memorial Coliseum, he knows every ref by name, every one of them. He's that, that guy. He is that guy, <laughs> and he's going to yell at them every game across the floor, every game. Um, but, you know, I sacrifice a lot of time away from them um, but they are behind me, and he knows this is my dream. Okay, something that's in, it, been in the news lately. Fashion and women coaches. Okay. And I'm looking at you because <laughs> I have been in the stands <laughs> taking pictures of your shoes, and I'm like, she is out there doing that in those six-inch heels. Yes, you got to do it. You <laughs> what do you do think it. about some of the conversations that's been having? You know, I think women should be able to wear what makes them feel powerful oh, keep it up. and classy mm -hmm. and like a boss. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Men never have to apologize for what they wear. So 
when I have a chance on my platform, I'm going to own it. I want to wear what I want to wear, how I want to wear it. And if it empowers me, I hope it empowers other people. It empowers me to see you you. out there doing that. I'm like, she is coaching and she's doing it in those, oh, you look great. Thank you. But I feel like women, we can be classy and we can still be a boss chick and still have fashion about ourselves. Fashionistas. When do do you think that's going to change or do you think that's going to change? I don't know. Where the question, is this appropriate for a coach to wear? When that I don't know that it will ever change because it's a male-dominated sport, um, but that's mm. okay. We can keep using our platform. Um, you know, they had the coach from Texas A&M. She had on pink leather pants. I love the whole and outfit. I love the whole outfit. I didn't understand why that was even a conversation. She looked beautiful. She was confident in her own skin. So if we are confident in our own skin, people need to just... The glass ceiling, ceiling has been shattered. There's, there, do not put us in a box. Do we not. do not want to be there. Because I was Googling it and trying to find how, where I could buy that outfit from. I love the whole outfit. <laughs> you know, I was telling my husband, I was like, they made such a big deal about it. I wish, because uh, it was for the KYAL Cancer Fund, I wish that she would say, you know what, I'm going to wear them one more game and auction them off. All proceeds goes to the KYAL Fund. Use oh. it to the advantage. You should send haters. her a message. I think I will do that. You Listen, she's become more popular now, you know, than she ever was. I'll see her coming up at the SEC tournament. I think I'm going to give her that idea. You give her that idea, but you do what you got to do when you get on that court, girl. That's what I know. Yeah. <laughs> be confident in your own skin. That's you know, right. sometimes society doesn't allow us to be confident mm-hmm. in our own skin. So that's why I think women empowering women is very important. Absolutely. I've, I've seen you do it at your games, and we've been doing it, you know, doing it here at Community Action, trying to give women a platform, a voice, to make sure that they are connecting with each other. Because everything, we are not competing with each other. What you do is great, is great and what I do is great. Absolutely. You know, and so boom, boom, boom. We need to uplift each other. Mm-hmm. So even our players will have different events, and I want them, they're like, we have to dress up. I was like, yes, dress up, because when you walk in the room, I want you to own it. Absolutely. Now, before we have to go, I have to ask you, are you going to be a mother-in-law anytime soon? I hear Jackson's dating. Yes, Jackson <laughs> is dating. He, uh, his current girlfriend. He's is five not, years old. He's five years old. His current girlfriend is Ryan Howard. He asked me the other night, did I like her? So I said, mommy likes this one, and I even like her mother. So at least you picked an athlete um, <laughs> that can ball um, and is educated and is going on to do big things. Mama approves. Mama approves of Jackson <laughs> and Ryan. Okay. Yes, I approve. <laughs> okay, before we go, I'm going to give you the last word to young women who might be aspiring um, to be just like you. What do you tell them? What kind of encouragement do you give them? Um, I would say don't be just like me. Be better. Mm -hmm. Um, And embrace your journey. And celebrate others until it's your time. And don't wish for something someone else has. You don't know what they have sacrificed or the heartache that has come with it. Um, So embrace your own journey and be confident in your own skin and don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. The sky is truly the limit. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. You guys heard it from Coach Kyra. Do not let anybody tell you that you can't do something. Continue to join us as we celebrate other women just like Kyra all across Kentucky who are trailblazing and making things happen. We'll talk to you soon. 